Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Elliott. Check this out. Today, I'm going to start by reading you a little bit of statistics for a second before we get started, but I'm going to go over my silver bullet. This is called the demonstration and the presentation. Let me explain this to you. If you don't know how to do a presentation that's killer and a demonstration that's killer, you're going to be killing your paycheck. I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're the number one salesman in the country or if you're just starting. Everybody should know how to do a deadly presentation and demonstration because this right here is the most important part of the sell. When people want something more than they want the money that they have in their pocket, they spend their money. Where does the value get built? It gets built here. Today, I'm gonna to go over two things with you. One, my walk around, how I do it. Number two, the demo. I wanna go over how I demo something. I'm also gonna go over two types of trial clothes. I go over one off the lot and I go over one on the lot. I'm gonna tell you this. There's not many guys doing trial clothes off the lot. I'm gonna give you mine that I use and it's helped me tremendously. It is, I mean, I'm telling you right now, it helped me probably close 70% more of the customers because I do it differently than what most people get at other stores. So, again, how to outsell your competition? Easy, crush them in the presentation demonstration. Why? Because your competition who's asleep at the wheel isn't giving it to them, I promise you. So, I'm gonna go over some statistics, then we're gonna start rocking it, and I'm gonna give you some information. This right here will change your game. Listen, I want you to think about these statistics. These were some statistics from 2019 NADA, okay? And I, I wanna kinda of go over some ideas in your mind how you think about the people that pull up on your lot. Are they wanting to buy? Well, NADA gave us some numbers here. Check this out. 78% of the people who look for a vehicle end up buying one. I want you to understand this. 78% who look for a vehicle end up buying one. Yet 83% responded with, I'm just looking when the salesman uh, greets him. So why does the customer respond with, we're just looking, why? Because they get the reflex conditioning response, right? And then, or they give it because the salesman is triggered to do, how can I help you? Hey, how are you doing? How can I help you? Don't ever say, how can I help you? Take how can I help you and break it in half and throw it in the trash can. Hey, how you doing? I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name's Andy. Can I help you, I can I help you guys find somebody? Can I help you find somebody? Don't greet people like a 10 car hand. If you're a 10 car hand, don't greet them like a 10 car hand, okay? Greet them like a 50 car hand. Hey, how are you doing? Hope you guys are having a blessed day. My name's Andy. Can I help you guys find someone? What do you think they're gonna say? No, we're just looking? No, they're gonna say just looking if you say, how can I help you? Then they say, I'm just looking. But when I say something really nice and I compliment them as I come up, that I don't get that. So why do most people 83% give that? I'm just looking because of that. And even though that 80%, 83% of the buyers that walk into a dealership are just looking, almost every one of them, 85% of them, said that they specifically came into the dealership to buy a car. Guys, when I think about these numbers, 88% of the, of the people said that the, the salesman that they spoke to didn't investigate their driving, one, driving ones, their needs, and their desires, and didn't build any rapport with them before they tried to sell them a car. Guys, shortcuts, shortcuts, and more shortcuts. And I want to share this with you. I can keep going on and on and on and on, but look, the average person hasn't been taught how to do the, the road to the cell hasn't been taught how to do a great presentation demonstration. So, this is something that's not talked about enough in our industry. Watch this. The presentation is where we, we as salespeople, tell the buyer what the vehicle will do for them when they own it. So listen, so Mrs. Johnson, now obviously I've seen the back seat in your other car. Ms. Johnson, go ahead and put your kids in here. Look how much room your kids have. Do you understand when you own this car, Look how much room you're gonna have in the back seat. Now look, my words are everything. During the presentation, we tell the customers everything the car will do when they own it, okay? This is a great time to use reflective listening. I'm not sure if anyone in your dealership has ever taught you reflective listening, but reflective listening is huge. What reflective listening means is the customer tells you something and then you tell them back what they said to you and it's basically what they wanna hear. And when you say it, it just sounds like music to their ears because most salespeople don't listen. So reflective listening. 
Ask them what they want and then tell them what they want to hear. Remember to remember what you hear. If you're not listening to your people, you can't do this. So reflective listening is like, she's like, you know, well, I, I really think that I want some more room. You know, we want to sit a little higher off the ground. Okay, okay, that sounds fair. Oh my gosh, so during the presentation, let me show you this. Mrs. Johnson, this vehicle from the factory comes sitting up about two inches higher than most SUVs on the road. And when I talked to you earlier, you told me about how you want to sit a little higher off the ground and be safer, right? Yes, okay, awesome. And this isn't a yes ladder deal where I'm trying to get yeses out of them. This is just time to do reflective listening. So in the investigation, during the fact, find, qualify in the beginning, we're using all these things. We're not just talking about the car. The car is nothing without using reflective listening, which is the information that they gave us while they're there actually wanting to buy something, okay? So show the buyer what they want to hear and see. You got to make sure you're handling that. All right, here's the fact. The more demos you do, the more sales you'll close. Why? Because 99% of the buyers said that they want to drive the vehicle before they bought it. So check this out. So if 99% of the people want to drive a car before they buy it, think about this. The more demos you do, the more cars you'll sell. Anybody that knows anything about the car business, it's like baseball. It's a numbers game, okay? How many times can you get on base? How many demo rides can you get? Look, let me explain this to you. Nobody's selling nothing without a demo ride. Let me explain to you what the demonstration is, how it changes the whole game for people that are making a ton of money. Watch this. The car business is a numbers game. The demonstration is the highest emotional point in the sales process. This is where the buyer assumes mental ownership of the car. I want you guys to slow down for a minute and just back into this and think, when's the last time you sold a car so strong during the presentation and demonstration that you physically saw your customers take mental ownership of this car? I mean, literally, like physically presetting their radio stations when they're still in the parking lot, and they haven't even gone in to buy it because they're so sold. Think about it. Most of you guys on the other end, you're like, that's never happened. Do you know why? Because one, no one ever taught you, okay? So today, that changes. Or secondly, because you've been shortcutting. And I'm gonna explain this to you. I love negotiations, closing. Man, I mean, money justification, the price too high, payments too high, I want more for my trade. I need to think about it. I get back with you. I love all those things. I love every objection that we can get. But can I tell you this? Do you know that half those things won't even come up? You'll be outselling your, com your competition. They already know they want the car most of the times, but they don't want to take it home right then. Do you know why? Because they haven't been sold it yet. Look, let me reread this sentence to you. The car business is a numbers game. The demonstration is the highest emotional point in the sales process. What's the highest emotional point in the sales process? The demo ride, okay? This is where the buyer assumes mental ownership of the vehicle. I'll tell you something, you challenge yourself. You should go do demo ride today. And when you're done, I want you to do a killer presentation in a killer demonstration, right? And when you're done, I want you to be able to see and look in your customer's eyes and see the mental ownership that they've taken. And if you can do that, welcome to the sales club. 100,000 a year for you is nothing. It'll be how many times you make 100 over and over and over. And as we're getting ready for 2020, I'm gonna tell you this, we're gonna have to sharpen ourselves. We're going to have to have a double-edged sword constantly getting sharp, getting ready for this next year. Because remember, who's our competition? The guy across the street, the guy in another state. It's everyone. You have to be 100 times sharper than everyone else. While everyone else is eliminating this and not even thinking about this, they're trying to think about some big picture. No, no, no. It's real simple. This is the silver bullet. It's right here. It's in the presentation and demonstration. It's in the way that you make them fall in love with this car that the guy across the street can't. It's not about product knowledge. It's about the influence and the persuading of the product that you have 
with the customer. Telling them about the car means nothing. Making them fall in love with the car is everything. That's why we gotta go back to the demo ride and fall back in love with demo rides. Guys, it's not rocket science. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. I've got a million closes I'd love to teach everybody, but if you can't get this, we can't even go there, okay? Too many salespeople believe that the vehicle is sold in the office. It's not. The vehicle is sold during the presentation and demonstration. Listen, let me tell you this. When you're getting to the office and your customers aren't ready to buy or they're wanting to leave mid-car deal, you shortcut it here. That's it. You shortcut it. If you take shortcuts out, guess what? You'll stop killing your check. So, let me go into a second, right, how I treat this. This would be the walk around. The walk around, what I do is when I pull up a car, I move it about 15 to 20 feet away from all the other vehicles around me. Why? Because I want to isolate it. Don't let it blend in with the other cars. Pull it away. So let me explain this. When I go out with the keys and I'm showing the car, the customer's sitting there with me, right? And they're like, okay, cool. Like he's about to open it up for us. No, 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 no. Guys, give me just a second. I jump in the car. I pull it out about 20 yards away. Why? because I want to get it away from the other ones. Why? Because I don't want to let them squeeze in there and check it out. No, 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 I'm getting it over there. I'm getting it away from the other cars. Yes, they're going to walk 20 feet, 20 yards in the other direction. I'm controlling them, pull them away. Then I open up all the doors. I pop the car open. I turn on the radio. I get the, get the heater or the air on, whatever it is. I get it ready to do a walk around. And guess what? When I walk around that car, I sell it like it was the last car ever made. I sell like it's the last day I'm going to be alive. And do you know what? This is how big money's made. Does your customer deserve this presentation from you? Yes. Have you been giving it to them? No. Stop lying to yourself. Elevate your game. Your paycheck is going to go to the next level. All right. Let's go into the demo ride. I use the same route every time. Okay, when I, when I close car deals, I close the same way every time, okay? I don't get lost, I have systems. So when customers start throwing in all kinds of stuff, guess what happens? I stay on my system and I don't get lost. They may get lost, but not me. So when I go on a test drive, in a demo ride, I tell my customers where we're gonna go, what the next step is, I give them specific instructions. Why? Because I'm the expert, I'm the professional, listen. If you can start telling them what to do now during the demo ride nice and politely, do you think you can continue to tell them what to do next? What's the next step on buying? Yes. When are you going to start letting them start to, to listen to you? Right in the demo ride. Give them directions. Tell them where to go. Tell them what to do. And when they listen, you'll see that you'll begin to have control. Okay? All right. Trial close off the lot. Trial close on the lot. This is probably one of the things that I do that I really have never seen any other salespeople do. Whenever I go on a demo ride, when I'm about halfway through, now listen, if I'm on a credit building program demo ride, like they came in on a lifted Chevy Tahoe and I'm like a Chevy Cavalier, right? I don't do a mid-test drive trial close. I'm getting back to the store because I'm not trying to sell a car, I'm trying to sell what the car does for them, which is build their credit. But if this is a car that someone has selected and they love, or they like it a lot, and I know that I really got to sell this thing, what I do is I go on a demo ride, and halfway through, I say, hey, guys, do me a favor. Pull this over there in this parking lot real quick. Just pull it right over there real fast. Now, I've already got a pre... I got an idea. I just want you to pull it over for two seconds. I know this sounds crazy. Pull it over, pull it over, pull it over. And guess what? They listen to me, and they pull it over. I've already pre-planned where I want this car to go. I know what it looks like, and I say, do me a favor. Go ahead and back into this spot right here. And they back in. I say, guys, come on over here with me. Come on. I know it's silly. Kids, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Come on. Come over here with me. And I sit back and I say, guys, the reason why I brought you out here, I don't do this often, but I wanted to do this because I wanted you to see. Whenever I bought my last car, I remember when I was looking on the, at the car lot and I saw it. I was on the pavement, all those other cars blending in. I, it kind of, you know, I don't know. Maybe I couldn't see it sitting in my driveway, but I just really needed to clear my mind. So I brought it out here, my own car before I bought it. And I remember same spot, the same place your car is right now. And I stepped back and I thought, man, clear mind. I can definitely see that sitting in my driveway. Drives great, beautiful car. And that's when I made the decision to own it. 
And I went back to the store and I did the paperwork. What I'd like to ask you guys, obviously you got a beautiful family, you guys are awesome. I know that you love the way the car drives. Guys, can you envision that car sitting in your driveway? Yeah, yeah, you see my head? Yeah, yeah, awesome. I wanted to just slow down for a second before we got back to the dealership. I wanted you guys to come out here and truly see it for yourself and see if that you could see it sitting in your driveway as well. Do you agree, ma'am, sir, kids? Kids, can we see it sitting in the driveway? Yeah, everybody loves it? Awesome, let's go back to the store. Check this out, that's a first trial close. I wanna tell you this, I take my customers on an experience that they won't get across the street. If they got a test drive across the street, they didn't get one like I give. Not a chance in hell is it happening. I kill my competition. I want you to start crushing them too. Listen, if you guys are going to be my guys in 2020, it's time to elevate our game and take it to a whole nother level. Try that trial close, man. You're going to be blown away in mid-test drive, dude, when you're backing them up and you tell them that's where you put your car to when you bought it. Honestly, you don't really bring people out here very often, you know what I'm saying? I mean, matter of fact, you've never brought anyone out here. They're the first time. I don't even know why I did it. Maybe because you guys are such awesome people, I just wanted you to see it out here. You know, clear your mind. Guys, make the steak sizzle, come on. What did we say? Emotional point. The demonstration is the highest emotional point in the sales process. It's where the customer assumes mental ownership of the vehicle. Did they just assume mental ownership of that vehicle? Yes. Why? Because of my deadly trial clothes. Now, when I get back to the store, What's the first thing that I do? This is old. It's 25 years old. Hell, I don't know who came up with it, but one of my favorite things is say, guys, do me a favor. Pull it right there into the soul lane. Just right there to the right. That's where we park all our soul cars. You can just park it right there. That lets the rest of the guys know that there's a car deal working on this car so that they can't sell it. Guess what? Why do I say that? I say that because I want them to hear that. And when they pull that in that area, we're good. Maybe you don't do that. Maybe you think that's stupid. I don't think it's stupid. I'm going to tell you, when I made 700 grand a year selling cars, wasn't very stupid. You know what? Whatever works for you, do it. I take the mid-trial clothes, and then I take the one when I get back to the store. Or you could say, hey, pull it around to the side. This is the place where anytime we're working a car deal, we pull them in this area. Okay? But the deal is, is that I like the sold lane. Do you want to say working a car deal, or you want to say sold? I'm more about sold. Didn't I just ask them if they can envision it sitting in their driveway? They said, yeah. So this is where we pull the sold lane. Now watch this, or you could just say, hey guys, go ahead and pull it up right there. And guess what, when they're done, you back up and you say, guys, obviously it seems like we found the right car, you love it. I forgot to ask you, do you wanna be titling the vehicle in your name or in both your names? How do you guys wanna be titling your new vehicle? Guess what, they'll answer. I will title it just in my name. Cool, follow me inside, let me get your, let me get your paperwork started. That's pretty much it, guys, but you have to have a trial close. And let me explain this to you, okay? Do you remember how I said right here on the trial clothes off the lot? You know, I, I don't normally bring people out here, okay? But I wanted you guys to actually slow down and see it out here because number one, A, you guys have great taste. You picked out a beautiful car, beautiful. Secondly, reliable, whatever. Me touching all the hot spots, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the things that are important to them. And then I'm gonna say, can't you guys see that sitting in your driveway? When you're off the lot and you're away from everything, you're going to get a yes. Now, if you get a maybe at that point in time, you could say, okay, and when you see, say maybe, would it be the vehicle or would it be like maybe the numbers on the vehicle? And they say, well, it'd probably be the numbers. Awesome. So you, you're saying you could see it sitting in your driveway and you would like to see it sitting in your driveway, but the numbers have to be right. Is that right? Awesome. Guys, listen, I'll make the commitment when we get back to the store. I'll make sure that I settle it, put this deal to bed. I'll make the numbers right. Fair? Fair. Thank you, guys. Guess what? I handle it. When I go back to the store, I'm not letting them pull up in front of their trade-in, get out of the car, you know what I'm saying, look around at some other cars. I've already made a gentleman's agreement off the lot with them that we're going to do business. Guys, this is my silver bullet. This right here is the one thing that if you can master, me and you can talk about everything else. Guys, I want you to have a blessed day, and if you need anything, shoot me a text, 918-210-0254. Have a great day.